uh, we're introducing an additional difficulty level to the game called Novice. Um, that, uh, you know, by design is targeting uh, players that are new to racing games or new to games in general. Uh, lots of help from the game. Uh, should we say the success rate is supposed to be much higher when you try to, to perform laps or participate in competitions and so on used in novice mode but obviously the the level of of um, challenge and immersion is slightly different than what you would expect in the other modes um, but you've got to start somewhere and we think that with the introduction of the novice mode we have supplied a place where someone brand new to this can actually come in and, and, and yeah figure it out on their own terms and then progress on to the other difficulty levels Well, the, the main reason really is that the race room racing experience is part of, of the race room franchise. Uh, and uh, just as there are people playing at home in front of their computers or going to race rooms and play, we also do events. Um, we do uh, events with our partners, with manufacturers and so on. And there we get visited by people that do not have a gaming background. They're not gamers, you know, by nature. Uh, they might not even have a driver's license, but they still want to be entertained. Uh, and then to put them in a, in a simulator, or for that matter, give them a, a joypad, uh, and ask them to perform a game in action, on top of actually also driving, understanding all the inputs that they're getting, you know, from the screen, the sounds and everything, it's probably, it's probably a little bit too much. And um, and, and you know, we have seen it at different events that certain people got discouraged, uh, and we don't want that. We want time spent with the game to be to be a good time. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we decided let's do novice, see what we can do. Uh, you know, we're not done with the with the specter of the game, and us doing novice is not, you know, uh, it shouldn't be seen as us then channeling the game towards that segment. Uh, we, we started in the middle. Uh, we know that there is room towards sim racers and there was room towards the novice players or those that are brand new to gaming. And first we have reached towards the new players, uh, but we will also reach uh, further towards the sim racers. But, uh, you know, Simbin is a uh, an independent developer uh, with limited resources and uh, you know we got to do things one item at a time and uh, and uh, yeah we chose to start there for for the reasons that I mentioned with regards to events and so on um, but we have not forgotten our, our heritage and where we come from so. uh, the difference well, the, the, the biggest difference is that, um, you know, the, the biggest challenge, other than understanding that this is a game and trying to channel some sort of thought process into potentially two sticks on a joypad, or for that matter, a wheel and pedals, I mean, imagine if you don't have a driver's license, how difficult it would be to go and sit in a car and understand how to drive, right? equally difficult to sit in a simulator and, and try and drive there. It's the same mechanics of wheel and pedals. Um, so while you are concentrating on what the different things does, the car is moving around the track at a, an alarming pace. The sound is, is, you know, very much in your face. You have lots of impressions that you're trying to absorb and deal with at the same time. Uh, too much. You know, and you will not pick up the, the corner markers that are on the track to tell you that, you know, now you need to apply some brake or you need to turn because you're so busy with all these other inputs. Uh, so for novice mode, uh, the game will, will apply the brakes for you. You can brake yourself too, but if you fail to brake, the game will do it for you. It's running with the, uh, with the automatic gears. Uh, you can't change that, so you don't have to worry about that. All you've got to do is actually give gas and steer. Um, and then we have a little bit of steering aid, 
it is not steering the cab for you, but it is making micro adjustments to the car uh, should the, the rear brake traction. Um, and the reason that why that's important is that we have not gone overboard on traction control. So we actually do allow the car to to move a little bit, but with these micro inputs from from the steering, it means that a small slide will never become a big slide. And in actual fact, as a new player, you know, you need to pick up what's happening. You need to look at the car and see that it's sliding. And, and as a new player, you simply don't. Uh, so you wouldn't be making these small adjustments yourself. The game is doing it for you. Um, obviously, the AI uh, for, for game modes that depend on AI is tweaked uh, to match uh, the, the, the should we say, difficulty level that you would expect from a novice uh, experience. Um, we have not detuned the cars, they are still uh, going as fast as they can. So you can still, you know, find yourself behind the wheel of a really, really fast car and go on, for example, one of the hill climb stages and get into a somewhat hairy experience, but the game will make sure that you get from A to B relatively safe. Um, in addition, you know, I would say that a new player never done a racing game or any game for that matter before, they get in the simulator, they start playing. The first time they play, the systems will be doing most of the work, they will just be trying to keep the car in the middle of the track. Second time around, or on the second lap or something, they will probably try and take matters into their own hands. And for that we needed the, the, um, the, the game to be better at communicating what was going to happen. Uh, now, in the past, we have used a, a corner marker that was part of the hut on screen, and it was placed in the middle of the screen, and on that, it, there was an indicator showing either left or right, and sort of the severity of the turn. The um, thing is, though, that for a new player, their focal point is in the middle of the screen, and now you put up a, a small mark on screen that you then ask them to look at and understand, you know, is it left or right? we decided to go against, should we say, the, the, the norm and run with a marker on each side of the screen. So basically it's in your peripheral vision. And they're, they're color coded, so you, when it, if it's red, you'll see that that's a severe turn. And it, it shows up on the side of the, the screen that the corner is turning. It works really well and uh, it's uh, as safe an experience as we can make it without you know, you just sitting there in the game playing itself. We we would want some kind of interaction from the player, yeah. Uh, well, there is ABS, uh, obviously, to prevent the wheels from locking up. Uh, there is traction control. Um, there is uh, braking assist, not the same as ABS. Braking assist will actually apply brakes for you. There is a uh, recovery system so that if you do lose control of the car, you do steer off the track, at first the game will try and bring the car back by making minute steering inputs to get you back on track. Uh, if that fails and you end up facing the, a wall or a tire barrier or just in the wrong direction or whatever, uh, the game will reset your car without you having to press any buttons or anything. So um, I think that's you know, the, the key elements in terms of code, at least. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it helps because um, it, it doesn't help you become a better driver out in traffic, but, you know, if you are not a gamer and you're at an event or you, you come past a, a race room like this one, um, if you don't go in and actually play, then you will never become a racing gamer, right? So, uh, think of it this way, someone comes in, it's their first time with a racing game, they sit down, they try, they get discouraged, they're not likely to try again. Uh, whereas if they come in and try a novice mode in race and racing experience, chances are that they will have a good and immersive experience that over time will will 
lead them to try uh, the amateur level and hopefully uh, progress on to get real um, later. So it helps them get started, mm -hmm. you know. But but it's not a tutorial. It's not a driving school. It's not a, a you know an education as such. It is just a, a controlled experience where you get to to try and to try and drive a nice race car. Novice is implemented as a, as a full uh, featured component in the game. So uh, for uh, uh, leaderboard challenge, for track test, competitions, challenges, um, everything where you can you know interact with the cars and the tracks and so on, you can choose Novice. Um, common game modes whatever they may be, will also feature novice mode, of course. Uh, so it is, it, is, it is a choice on the same level as amateur and get real uh, is currently. Uh, yes, we are. As, uh, I mean, look, we, when we set out with, with this new approach of race and racing experience, we decided that you know we, we we respected our own limitations and and the should we say the, the, the fact that it's a quite big undertaking that we chose to 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 start uh, and at first we wanted to hit sort of the the sweet spot the middle of the the, the pack if you will um, and uh, you know you can you can say that we we did well or we didn't that's very much depending on, on your background and where you come from, what games that you enjoy in terms of racing games, right? Um, I mean, the, the Get Real mode that we have today, it's not as fully featured as you expected it to be if you were looking at uh, GTR or GTR 2 for that matter. Um, but there's nothing to say that it won't be. There's nothing to say that it won't be even more feature rich than the ones we have had in the past. Uh, we just got to get there uh, slowly but surely. We don't want to make you know mistakes that will get us in in trouble. Uh, and um, there is things to add. Uh, get real plus uh, uh, an additional layer to get real, an additional layer to the whole you know element of actually having a race car and so on. Um, there is uh, lots of interesting stuff coming in the future. Uh, the amateur mode, we're still working on it, we're still making small tweaks here and there. Uh, will there be an additional layer between novice and amateur potentially? It's not unlikely, but uh, it's also not a promise. We will see how things work out with novice first.